Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey, and here let's check out a very interesting asset, the Quantum Console. This is a powerful, easy to use in-game console. You can easily make your own functions into console commands, which you can then run while in-game. So change the player health, respawn, change gravity, enable no clip, or make some cheat commands. It's extremely useful for helping you be much more efficient while testing and developing your game. Now this video is split in two parts. First let's look at the official demo to see what the asset can do and how it works. And then after that, I will do a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to start using it and add it to your own game. Check out the entire asset review playlist where I highlight great assets to help you make your games awesome. This video is sponsored by Unity, which is currently running the massive Black Friday sale on the Unity Asset Store. There's over 500 assets, all heavily discounted, everything from tools to models, animations and tons of effects. On top of that, this sale also has lightning deals, which start at 90% off and slowly go down in discount as more and more people buy the asset. So that means that if you get it quickly, you can get a massive discount. I also made a video and a list covering some of the best highlights. The sale is on until the 4th of December, so check it out with the link in the description. And this asset is also discounted as part of the sale, so if you like what you see in this video, go ahead and pick it up before the discount ends. And if you're watching this after the sale is over, then you can instead use the coupon code MONKEY10 to get 10% off your order. So the Quantum Console. It's a really interesting tool that definitely has the potential to greatly increase your productivity. It's a console that you can bring up during gameplay and you can define commands for that console. For example, if you've heard of developer or cheat consoles, like for example what you see in Quake or Half-Life, if you've heard about the famous noclip command, then yep, that's what this is. And the way that you create commands is so extremely easy. You just literally apply one attribute and that's it. So you can make a command to easily change the player speed, or maybe spawn some enemies, change level, change gravity, and so on. You can really make it do anything, which can be extremely useful for testing and while developing your game. So here I've got my project and I imported the package. Now before you install the package, make sure you have Text Mesh Pro installed. It should be installed by default. So when you do, it adds this folder, so inside plugins, QFSW, the quantum console. And then over here, one of the main things it has is a nice readme file. This one is pretty small, just one page, just a very quick getting started guide so you can see how easy it is to use. And then for a more thorough documentation, you've got a link to the website. On the website, you've got some easy to follow tutorials. It explains all of the pre-built commands and what they do, all of the ways that you can use the command attribute, and some very easy to follow video tutorials. Okay, so let's see the official demo. It's under demo scene, demo scene. And as soon as you hit play, right away, you see the console right in here. The default key to toggle it to show and hide is escape, so as you press it, it shows or hides the console. Then you can also click on this button in order to manually close it. Then you can click and drag on this one to resize it. Then on these buttons, you can zoom in or out on the text, very useful. And then a button to clear the console, and then of course here you can input the commands. So you've got all of the basic console interactions you would expect. Now just like it says up here on the demo, all demo commands are prefixed with demo. And the console does have autocomplete, so as soon as I type in demo, yep, it shows all of the available commands that start with demo. And now by pressing tab, I can cycle through all these commands and with shift tab, cycle back. So for example, one of the commands is the robot kill. So you just execute this command and now it asks which robot you want to kill. Let's pick a random one. And there you go, that robot was destroyed. So essentially it asked me which object it should apply that command to. I chose it and then it applied the command onto the robot. Now for some commands, it supports passing in parameters. So for example, over here, the demo gate opened. If I pass this one with true, you can see, yep, the gate does open. On the other hand, if I just do it like this and I press enter, then it simply reads the value. So you can see how with this, it's very easy to modify or read variables while in game. I can easily spawn some more robots. Let's say five more robots. Then I can close the gate again, spawn some more robots and manually kill them all, and so on. So these are the demo commands. Now to check out all of the pre built commands, you can also do all commands. And you have here chose all of the pre built commands that come by default. And just like it says here, you can use the command man in order to read the manual for the command. So for example, man max FPS. Yep, so this command is used to modify the maximum FPS. So for example, while testing, it is absolutely necessary to make sure to test your game in multiple frame rates to ensure that the game still works while playing at something like 10 FPS. So normally you would have to make a custom script, listen to some input and modify the max frame rate. Whereas with this, you just get that by default. So over here, you can type in max FPS, set it to 10, and there you go, now the game is playing at 10 FPS. So now you test it, make sure that everything is working, and then once again, go back into minus one, back into unlimited. Also in the command prompt, you can use the arrow keys in order to go back and rewrite the previous command. 
Now all these commands are doing is really just calling a bunch of functions or reading and writing some variables or properties. So just with this demo, you can already see just how versatile this asset can be. Any function or variable that you have in your game, you can easily trigger or modify during play mode with a nice custom command. So now that we've seen the official demo, let's see how to apply it to a brand new game. So here is my own demo. I've got a third person shooter controller. I can walk around, I can aim and I can shoot. Now this was made in a previous video, so check it out if you haven't seen it yet. And then over there, I also got some targets so I can shoot them. And when I do, they just break into pieces. Again, I also covered this in another video. So it's a pretty nice, simple demo. You can imagine this as a sort of sandbox scene where if you were making a third person shooter, this would be where you would test out all of your weapons in your player controller. Now let's use the quantum console to make this scene work great as a testing ground. By the way, if you find the video helpful, please hit the like button. It's a tiny thing, but it really does help. Thanks. Let's follow the super quick getting started guide from documentation. So first of all, like it says, ensure text mesh row is installed, so it is. Then make sure you add an event system into your scene. So over here, I already have it, but if not, you would just right click, go into UI, create new event system. Then next step is to simply drag the quantum console prefab. So just go inside the plugins, quantum console, and over here under prefabs, yep, the various prefabs. There's one for the built-in render pipeline and one for the SRP. So since I'm using URP, I'm going to drag this one. So just drag that RP in there. And yep, there's the console. And just like this, it already has the built-in commands. So if we test this, yep, there's the console. It's ready and everything is working. So for example, one of the built-in commands is the time scale. So let's set the time scale. Let's put it at 0.2, so at 20% speed. And now, yep, there you go. My game is now running at slow motion. Look at that. All right, great. So everything is already working. Now, of course, the main purpose is to have some custom commands. So let's build that. So here in the scene, I've got a target range game object just managing a bunch of things. So it just has a timer with the ability to spawn targets periodically, function to set it, the function to spawn the target, and then two functions to set the gravity, either low gravity or normal gravity. So let's make some of these into actual console commands. Now to do that, it's extremely simple. We just go up here, we need to add the using statement, using and the namespace qfsw.qc, quantum console. And then we just go down here, let's say these gravity functions, all we need to do is just add the attribute command. All right, just add that one in that one and on this one. And yep, that's it. Don't need to touch anything else. So let's test. All right, I've got my console. And if I now type in all commands, you can see over there the set low gravity and the set normal gravity. So right now, gravity is pretty normal. Okay, so this is the normal gravity. And now if I go and put set low gravity, and now I jump, and yep, there you go. Now I've got low gravity. All right, so that's it, very simple. As you can see, that's how easy it is to add a command. You just add the attribute and that's it, it already works. Now, when making the commands, when using the command attribute, you can actually give it some parameters. So for example, the main one is the alias override. So it's essentially giving a command a different name from the actual function name. So instead of set low gravity, maybe set low gravity, just to keep with the other standard. So that's how you do it. Also note how these are static functions. So these are not being invoked on a specific object. But of course, sometimes you want to run functions on a specific object. So for example, over here is the target range single. So this script is attached to each one of those targets. So there are multiple of them. Now over here, there's a function to destroy the target. And then we can see the second parameter, which is of type mono target type. So this is where you define the target object where this command will run on. So if you choose on all, then it will run on every single object that has this component. Then you've got all, and it also looks for inactive objects. Then you've got the registry. This is for a more advanced use case with this asset. You can essentially register specific objects so the console knows about them. Then the single, which is default. So if you hide this one, then it won't work with just a single. So if we try to run this. So if I now run the command destroy target and let's see which one gets destroyed. And yep, only one gets destroyed. And it's just the first one that was created. So that's how you define which target the command will run on. And then just like we saw a while ago on the official demo, you also have the ability to choose. So over here on this function, I pretty much just copy the code straight from the demo scene. So this one is an I enumerator and just does a bunch of yield returns. So it lets you choose a target, then it identifies that target of that type and then runs the function on that target. Now these value and choice, these things are directly from the qc.actions namespace. So these types are included as part of the asset. If I try this one and I run destroy targets, Yep, there you go, it tells me which one. So let's say target four, and yep, there you go, it's gone. So you can see just how easy it is to add commands. 
You really just use the command attribute, give it an optional name or not, and that's pretty much it, nothing else. So I can make all of these into commands. And also here on the third person shooter script, I've got a function to add some ammo. So this one, as you can see, takes a parameter. So again, just imagine that this scene is my testing sandbox. So I'm playing around, I'm doing things. And now look at that, I ran out of ammo. But thankfully, since I've got the console, that's easy to fix. So just open the console, then for the command, add ammo count. And now let's say give myself 99 ammo. And yep, there you go, now I've got 99 ammo. So now I can continue testing, continue doing everything. Then I can set the target spawn rate. And yep, there you go, now targets are spawning, I've got ammo, so I can play around, test out all my weapons for as long as I want. And then when I'm done, then just run the last command, set it to zero, and stop spawning, and everything works great. All right, awesome. Now, just one quick note here, which is that the Quantum Console also shows what happens in the regular console. So over here on the add ammo count, let's do a normal debug.log added ammo. So just a normal log message. And over here, if I run the command, and yep, there you go, it does say there. So this is yet another way in which this asset is insanely useful. When you're running your game on a proper build, you can't normally read the log directly, but with this you can. You can read the logs, read any errors or warnings, and read them directly in-game, so there's no need to open the editor console. Alright, so that's the Quantum Console. It's a really great asset for helping you be more efficient while testing and developing your game. I really like this one. It would have been very useful to have something like this while I was building my Steam games, and I will definitely be using it whenever I make my next one. And don't forget to check out Unity's Black Friday sale. If you like this asset, then this is the best time to get it. And beyond that, check out all the other assets on sale. Pretty much all of the best ones are currently discounted. I hope you find this asset useful in your own projects. Check out the full asset review playlist for some more awesome assets. Let me know in the comments any suggestions for other assets I should review. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.